we chose granite uh, based on the nickname, the granite line that was the old nickname for the railroad that uh, went up Little Cotton Canyon to the granite mines to take granite down here to the valley to construct the temple. And we uh, showed that with a literal interpretation of kind of a line of granite boulders throughout this mile. Uh, many of them are seating elements. This is kind of one of the major seating elements of granite. We have some sculptures made of granite and, uh, and then other railroad Utah themes throughout uh, our sculptures. So in this in map engraving showing our, our valley, uh, X marks the spot where we're standing right here. Uh, this represents the new S line, and uh, which also is the old Rio, uh, Denver and Rio Grande Railroad that goes Harley's Canyon. This is an important canyon up here, Little Cottonwood Canyon. This is where uh, the granite mines were and where they took granite from the granite mines and took them down here to Temple Square. This sculpture that you see here is uh, in the shape of a sugar cube house because the neighborhood that it's in is called Sugar House. There's two of them. There's this, this one that represents sugar cubes and across the street you'll see a pink one that re represents salt from the Great Salt Lake. They're actually uh, from a trestle wood bridge for the trains that went across the Great Salt Lake. They were in, in the water soaking the salt of the Great Salt Lake for a hundred or so years. We cut them so that we had the flat surfaces because I, I like to have a flat front representing painting and that's why I call them builds for the German meaning of the word meaning picture um, and also the, the pun on to build in English because they're actually sculptures. So these two builds are placed here at this block across from each other uh, to represent the progression from the theme down the mountain, mountain meadow, river bend to the city block. As a pedestrian is walking this way, they're sort of welcomed into the, the city section of, of the S line through these, uh, these sculptures. So these are our trains. Uh, it's called the Jupiter and the 119, which are the train engines that met for the Transcontinental Railroad. We found two really huge long boulders to represent the train engines and we constructed these uh, these smokestacks from steel to to mimic the the distinctive shapes of, of those two trains. This sculpture behind me we've all, always called snowman or boulder man. We also call it a uh, boulder cairn uh, as a giant stack of uh, trail marker stones uh, which is appropriate to this part of the trail you see here. About 40,000 pounds altogether very difficult to excavate from the mountainside. Because of these wires, we couldn't do the um, smart thing and bring a, a crane. We had to use uh, massive forklifts, the heaviest for forklifts that you can get. And we had to uh, wheel them in this alleyway. And we built a very sturdy uh, concrete base uh, that it's drilled into. So it, it's very secure. This sculpture behind me, uh, is called Sugar House. It's a literal uh, representation of the neighborhood Sugar House. It's, this is meant to represent sugar cubes. And we, we like it as a portal into both the neighborhood, like a, a gateway welcoming symbol uh, of the neighborhood, and also a, uh, a portal to the path, which is uh, the S line. The, the artist, Mike Whiting, this is in his style of public sculpture, which is to design pixelated, simplified versions of objects as if they were in an 80s video game. So this fit, to, to make this out of sugar cubes, fit his aesthetic and his resume of, of sculptures that he's already made. Uh, the sculpture behind me, a lot of people mistakenly call it the duck. This is the seagull for Utah's state bird. Uh, this is another Mike Whiting original in his style of pixelated animals. He constructed this out of steel, fabricated it himself, painted it, installed it uh, with a crane here from the other side of the, the fence. And uh, it's a very cute piece.